The reason that we believe Christianity is true is because the answer to four questions is yes. Yes! Christian apologist Frank Turk is going to give us four indisputable reasons for Christianity. And he's going to do it using zero fallacies. How about the first question, does truth exist? No, there is no truth. All truth is relative, and that's the truth. Obviously, you hear people say all the time, there is no truth, or you got your truth, I got my truth, all truth is relative. When somebody says there is no truth, you ought to ask that person a question. You ought to say, is that true? Shit. I always fall for that one. Gah. Is it true that there's no truth? Because if it's true that there's no truth, the claim there is no truth can't be true, but it claims to be true. In other words, it's a self-defeating claim. Of course there's truth. If there was no truth, an atheist couldn't be right that there was no God. So there is truth. I'm with you on this, Frank. Granted, we all have our own individual perspectives, our own subjective truths. There's surely a baseline reality that is true regardless of our individual perspectives. I just don't think it's yours, man. Question number two, does God exist? There are several arguments for the existence of God. Let me just give you one. Even atheists today are admitting that space, matter, and time had a beginning out of nothing. Okay, hold the phone. Some physicists like Lawrence Krauss speculate on how the universe could have emerged from nothing. But the nothing they're talking about is not the absolute nothingness of religious and philosophical musings. It's a false vacuum or quantum gravitational state. Something Jesus probably mentioned along with germ theory the night that Peter and John passed out from drinking all his blood. So they never wrote it down. Anyway, Krauss's theory is just one among many. We actually don't know the initial state of the universe because it's a place where relativity and quantum mechanics meet, and the two are currently irreconcilable. Even Matt Damon knows this. The equation couldn't reconcile relativity with quantum mechanics. All that our current physics tells us is that the expansion of the universe probably had a beginning, not that the universe's whole existence had a beginning. Here's an actual physicist, Dr. Don Lincoln of Fermilab, to explain it to you. Let me recap what we know for sure. We know that the visible universe was once smaller and hotter, and it's expanding. We know that there was a moment when the expansion began. We know that that moment was about 13.8 billion years ago. Furthermore, it's often said that the Big Bang created space and time, and there is some truth to that. Certainly, the Big Bang expanded space and time, but remember that the theory of general relativity, along with all other known physics, doesn't apply before time equals 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So that means that statements about time not existing at time equals zero or before should be considered as suspicious. See? I'm giving you the straight dope. So if you could please stop pretending to know things that you don't, That'd be great. Now, when you think about a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, personal, intelligent cause, who do you think of? God. Personally, I think of Betty White. That's just me. But you might want to prove that your premises are true before you jump to the conclusion that a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, smart person ignited the universe especially since this is starting to sound like a Marvel movie ruined by Kevin Sorbo in the lead role. The third question is, are miracles possible? Obviously, Christianity can't be true if miracles are not possible. But the greatest miracle in the Bible has already occurred, and we have scientific evidence for it. What's that? I just mentioned it. The creation of the universe out of nothing. If Genesis 1-1 is true, every other verse in the Bible is at least possible. Because if there's a being that can create the universe out of nothing, can he do whatever he wants inside the universe? If he can create the whole show out of nothing? Of course. Of course, Genesis 1-1 features God creating the world ex materia, not ex nihilo, from nothing. Here's yet another expert to tell you why you're wrong.
Interpreters are accustomed to read the first statement of the creation account in Genesis 1-1 as a statement of creation ex nihilo, or creation out of nothing, which presupposes that nothing existed prior to God's creation of the world. In English, Genesis 1, 1 through 2 would then read, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void. But such a statement conflicts with other depictions of creation in the Bible, such as Job 38, Psalm 74, and Isaiah 51, which indicate that God overcame a chaos monster as part of the process of creation in which a pre-existing world of chaos was brought into order. Close analysis by the medieval biblical commentator Rashi of the initial words of Genesis 1-1 indicate that they cannot be read as in the beginning God created, because the term is a construct form that lacks a definitive article. The verb cannot be read as a perfect verb, but it must be rendered as an infinitive that forms a construct chain with the terms that precede and follow. Consequently, the verse must be read as, In the beginning of God's creating the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void. The result is a statement in which the earth pre-existed creation in a state of chaos that was put into order by God. God's act of creation then becomes a model for human action in the world. That is, the task of human beings modeled on God becomes one of overcoming chaos in the world and placing the world into order. See, I told you you were wrong. The idea of creation ex nihilo, or creation from nothing, didn't actually emerge historically until the latter half of the second century among Christian theologians, but it's not strictly speaking what physicists are talking about, and it's not what Genesis says either. In fact, Genesis 1 has it that the earth was in existence on day one, and the sun wasn't created until day four, since planets are actually byproducts of star formation, Genesis cannot be taken as a scientifically accurate account. That's why Genesis is rarely cited in astrophysics papers. He can resurrect Jesus from the dead or walk on water or part the Red Sea. He can do any of that. He can prevent the Holocaust. He can make Jeffrey Dahmer not eat people. He can give Ted Cruz a conscience. He can do any of that, but he doesn't. So the final question, the fourth question, which gets us all the way to the Christian God is, is the New Testament reliable enough to show us that Jesus rose from the dead? I'm sure it is, Frank. The reason we believe in Christianity is because an event occurred, the resurrection. Now, I have to ask you this. Why would the Jewish writers of the New Testament, all were Jewish with the exception of Luke, why would they invent a resurrected Jesus? Why would they say that a man who claimed to be God rose from the dead if it didn't happen? Uh, because their leader got killed by the Romans, so they looked to the scriptures to reason that it was a sacrificial atonement for sin, and just like the suffering servant of Isaiah, he was raised and highly exalted and seated at God's right hand like the figure of Psalm 110. None of these passages concern Jesus in their original context, but they sure came in handy in the aftermath of his death. New Testament scholarship has pointed this out for at least half a century. It's emblazoned in the 1 Corinthians 15 Creed that the death and resurrection of Jesus was all in accordance with Scripture. That's where they found it. Not to mention the imminent expectation of the resurrection of the dead by Jews of that time. It's not hard to see why they would have come to such a belief even if it didn't really happen especially since their culture and traditions primed them for just such a belief. They thought that would be blasphemy for a man to claim to be God. And why would they invent a resurrected Jesus? They already thought they were God's chosen people. They had no motive to invent a resurrected Jesus. It's not actually clear that Jesus claimed to be God or that early Christians thought this, only that he had a special relation to God, which was not even remotely blasphemous. Many Jewish patriarchs and prophets did, and several were thought to be raised to a special status in heaven, including Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah, and the high priest Onias. As God's supposed chosen people under Roman occupation and oppression, they were surely looking forward to the day that the Messiah would overthrow their oppressors, raise the dead, and inaugurate a new kingdom on earth. 
that's plenty enough motivation to proclaim that Jesus was the first fruits of what they hoped was just around the corner. And certainly they could not have invented it in Jerusalem, where an empty tomb existed. The missing bodies of various kings, heroes, and legendary figures was a common trope in antiquity, signifying that they'd been deified and raised up to heaven, sometimes after death. So this is like saying they couldn't have invented Aristeus' resurrection in Prokinesis, where an empty shop existed, the very shop where his dead body went missing before appearing alive again to others. Defending a myth by appealing to elements within its narrative is circular and monumentally stupid. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, the New Testament writers did not create the resurrection. The resurrection created the New Testament writers. There would be no New Testament if it wasn't for the resurrection. In other words, the pyramid inscribers didn't create Osiris' resurrection. Osiris' resurrection created the pyramid inscribers. There would be no pyramid inscriptions if it wasn't for Osiris' resurrection. Do you realize there were thousands of Christians before a line of the New Testament was ever written? Why? Because an event occurred. The resurrection. Do you realize there were thousands of Osiris worshippers before one line of the Book of the Dead was written? Why? Because an event occurred. His resurrection. You have to have more faith to believe it didn't occur than it did. He's right. It takes an insurmountable amount of faith to deny that a Semitic storm god called Yahweh reanimated a Jewish corpse and shot it into the sky. And if God exists, and he does, and can create the universe out of nothing, then he can certainly resurrect Jesus from the dead. That's why we believe in Christianity. And all of this is why no informed skeptics believe you. Mm.